Hello, my name is Monica Wright, and I am completing my book review over The Inner Game of Tennis, The Classic Guide to the Mental Side of Peak Performance. So um, just a brief summary of this book. Um, it talked a lot about self one versus self two. That was kind of like the running theme throughout the book. So self one is kind of your, um, it's like your conscience. It's the thoughts that you have about yourself and about your performance. While self two is more of like your body and the feeling of the movements. Um, so sometimes self one, like let's say, he used a lot of these examples. If you miss the ball while you're playing tennis and um, you missed it, in your head or even maybe verbally you'll be saying like oh stupid like I should have hit that or I knew I needed to have my racket there I was like a second late that's your self one just that conscious um ability to know you messed up or even if you did something right um you could hit the ball and then you could also be verbally or mentally saying like okay you did this right you hit it at this time um more often than not though throughout this book he describes self one as kind of being negative um he said that like it can be positive, but he mostly talked about it being negative throughout the book. And then like I said, self too, um, was just the feeling. So another part of the book that was very important was he always talked about how you should feel the emotions and not really think about them. Um, so he would always instruct his students if they said, say they came and said that their backhand was bad, they were too high or they were too low. He would say, okay, don't think about what other people have told you. Um, I just want you to practice hitting the ball with your backhand. And he'd have them do it 10, 30 times. Um, and he would tell them to feel what they're feeling, where their placement is, um, of like their feet, the placement of their hands, where they're putting the racket when they do it. So just feeling that motion instead of thinking, oh, I know I'm too high, I need to lower my racket. He just wanted them to feel where they were at during that time. So two important take home messages that I found throughout the book was you are not defined by how well you play, but how hard you try. So he kept discussing in the book about how people were so negative towards themselves if they didn't do something right or how they would go to other teachers and they would say, oh, you're doing this wrong or you're doing this wrong. Um, he wanted them to focus on trying. He wanted them, like I said earlier, to focus on those motions and not think about what they're doing wrong or what they're doing right. Um, he thought that just getting those motions down was more important. So um, trying instead of like actually playing was what his goal was. He even talked later in the book about how he went to a competition and he won the first match with, the, with his opponent. In the second match, he focused more on his abilities of playing, not so much on winning, and he actually lost, but he came away from it excited because he had discovered like his true potential. So I feel like that was an important take home message. And then also um, another important message is to focus on how it feels when you're playing or doing whatever sport you're in or performance and not so much on like what you're doing right or wrong. Focus on how you're doing it um, because your body, that self too, will get into a rhythm where it knows where it needs to go to hit that ball or, um, or whatever sport it's in. So I have a couple favorite quotes. This first one is a little long, um, but I really like the message behind it. So it says, when we plant a rose seed in the earth, we notice that it is small, but we do not criticize it as rootless and stemless. We treat it as a seed, giving it the water and nourishment required of a seed. When it first shoots up out of the earth, we don't condemn it as immature and underdeveloped, nor do we criticize the buds for not being open when they appear. We stand in a wonder at the process taking place and give the plant the care it needs at each stage of its development. The roses arose from the time it is a seed to the time it dies. Within it, at all times, it contains its whole potential. It seems to be constantly in the process of change, yet at each state, at each moment, it is perfectly all right as it is. So um, I really like that quote because I think it's saying, to me, it's saying, um, instead of like saying negative comments to people, be positive and help them to develop and help them to grow. Because if you're just going to be negative, it'll just bring people down. This can also be with involving tennis as well. If you have a teacher who just keeps giving you negative feedback, it's not gonna improve your ability to grow. It's only gonna set you back. So you're going to be that 
rose seed that's planted and it has potential, but you may feel like you're rootless and stemless at the beginning or during that process if you're not getting the, um, the judgment you need, the positive judgment, not the negative judgment. Another quote that I liked was on page 100. It says, here and now are the only place in time when one ever enjoys himself or accomplishes anything. Most of our suffering takes place when we allow our minds to imagine the future or mull over the past. I like this quote because I notice myself a lot thinking about the future or the past. Um, and then it makes me stress out. I get anxiety from it. Um, and instead of thinking like where I am here now, like what I'm going through at the moment, like I graduate college on Saturday and I'm thinking of the future. Like, what am I doing next? What about grad school? Like, how's that going to go? Um, worrying about classes when I need to be thinking about the here and now and what all I have accomplished and how happy and proud I should be of myself. And then the final quote is, in fact, we are what we are. We are not how well we happen to perform at a given moment. This is important, and I think I think it's important, and it's a quote that I liked throughout this book, was because our society is so focused on competition that sometimes we don't even think about like who we are. We're not defined by that competition or even by our grades. I know a lot of times there's competition even within classes. Um, like for my class, we're going to grad school, so we were all competitive with each other, and that's not even what it's about. You're not defined by that. Um, nobody should let their grades or their performance ever define them. So I thought that was a really good quote. And then um, some concepts from the book. One was about positive thinking. So he was talking about how sometimes when people are having negative thoughts, they're told, oh, like replace those negative thoughts with positive ones. But he said these um, benefits are short range and he described it as like the honeymoon stage will end. And he says, you shouldn't do this because people focus on compliments and stress about messing up when they focus on those compliments. He described in there a story about how he was teaching, I think it was six women. Um, he had them focus on hitting the balls. They were just um, doing the motion with that self two, not focusing on self one. And he made a comment about how they were all hitting the balls like over by him. They were all clustered together. And he made a comment. He said, look, none of them have hit the net. Well, then as soon as he said that, they started messing up. Um, so he was just describing positive thinking, like, yeah, you want to compliment them, but also it may not be a good thing. So in the book, we learned about like in our textbook, we learned about positive thinking and how we should, um, like, we should think positively, but he's kind of saying the opposite whenever he's describing how you should say positive things to people. And then um, concentration was another one. He said, focus on one thing at a time instead of the whole thing. So he described how you should focus in tennis on like the seams of the ball. If you would like to um, focus on one thing, it should um, be more narrow. The more narrow it is, the better. It shouldn't be broad. You should just focus on one thing. He described like the seams of the ball when you're watching it, you should pay attention to that. And then um, he also said like maybe bouncing the ball, focus on that as well. And then an internal and external game he described he said these go on simultaneously in your like brain, like you have that external game, but then you also have the internal game with inside you. And so, um, so some play for like satisfaction while others play for prizes. We talked about that in our textbook as well, how some people just want that self like gratification of winning while other people kind of play for like an external prize, like money or fame or whatever it is. So I felt like that did match what we learned in our textbook. And then, um, my overall rating for the book, I would give it like a four out of five. I would say that if you're interested in tennis and interested about like the mental, mental side of it, it's a really good book for you to read. Um, if you're not interested, it may be kind of harder for you to concentrate and um, really understand the meaning behind it. But overall, I really liked it. So thank you so much.